just some several things pertaining to the common law jury, grand jury. The Pennsylvania Constitution under, and I'm going to be talking a good bit about this, under the uh, Article 1, Section 5, and here, I notice Gary has some of these over there. If you don't have a Pennsylvania Constitution, I urge you to get one from Gary and to become knowledgeable on it. Article 1, Section 5 says explicitly, and I quote, uh, elections shall be free and equal, and there's a comma there, and no power, civil or military, shall ever interfere with the right of suffrage. The United States Supreme Court, in the case of U.S. versus Miller, uh, made it very clear where, where rights are involved, there can be no rulemaking which would abrogate them. Now, on this voter registration, uh, I'm going to get to the Fifth Amendment, uh, a common law grand jury, uh, here in a minute. Uh, but on this voter registration, the very first question on the voter registration says, are you a citizen of the United States of America? If you answer no to this question, do not fill out this form. You are not, unless you say you are, a citizen of the United States of America. That is Washington, D.C., Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Guam, and so forth. Those are federal territories. Therefore, you are not a citizen of the United States of America unless you check yes on this box. And they're telling you on here, if you answer no to this question, do not fill out this form. And there's a good reason for that. It's a hidden message that you're not getting. You're an American national. You're one of the people. You are sovereign. You are above the government. This is our law to the government. This is the United States Constitution. Since God's law is the Bible, we're, we owe our allegiance to Him for our existence, but we owe no allegiance to the government. We are only subject to that which we have agreed to under the delegation of power through those two documents. As such, your saying, I am a citizen of the United States of America, is making you a federal citizen and giving Congress, President of the United States, and the judiciary power over you. When they have none, you're consenting to them. And it tells you, next to the signature box down here, that this document can be used for, as an affidavit for any purpose. And if you falsely stated something on there, you can be held for the penalties of perjury. Well, the first question, you claim to be something that gives them authority over you when they didn't have it. That's why they need your signature down here. And I'm telling you on this document, do not sign it. Fill it out. If you want to be registered to vote, fine. But strike line everything that I have struck, uh, stricken on here. It's just a single strike line with a straight edge through that information. Fill out the rest of it. Can I pass that out? Yeah, did you make some copies? Not mine. They're all copies there? Yeah. So, in doing so, uh, you are taking that power away from them that you do not consent to. You're saying, I don't agree with this. Okay? So if you want to use it as an affidavit, I have the right under contractual agreement to strike anything I disagree out, out of this document because it is a contract. Evidenced by the fact that you have to sign it and that they can hold you uh, responsible for penalty of perjury on this document. So this is telling you things that you may not know and, and should not consent to. So I, I urge you to re-register. I will be providing Gary a letter rescinding your former voter registration. So when you file this new registration, file that letter with it and send it by certified mail to the Bureau of Elections. Then make another copy and take it down and hand it to them. Because with that letter, it's going to demand your right to vote under Article 1, Section 5. I've already done this. I'm living proof that this works. I do vote in November. I don't vote in the primaries. But in November, I vote. And I can also run for office without being registered. I don't need to be registered. It's a right. And remember what I said about U.S. versus Miller. Where rights are concerned, there could can, can be no rulemaking which would abrogate them. That means you can't regulate my rights. I never surrendered any rights to the government, not even one. We retained our sovereignty as kings in our own right. That was addressed in the Treaty of Paris 
by King John and our King George himself. When he surrendered to Washington, that was part of the Treaty of Paris that he signed, that we are a king in our own right. That means according to your rights, you're king of the castle. You're king of your, your world, your being. You owe only allegiance to God, not to the government. We created that government by these constitutions, but we limited and restricted their powers. Okay? Then for criminal actions, you say, well, what is criminal? It isn't everything that you're subjected to today. Criminal is not subjective. It means there's an injured party. It means you injured someone. If you rape a girl, you rape a kid, you do something that you have no right to do to that person, and they don't grant you the authority to do that, and of course a child can't grant authority. A woman could. A woman could grant authority for you to have sex with her, or vice versa, but you can't forcefully force yourself upon her without it being a crime, because now there's an injured party. Follow me? Yes. Okay. Now, by the same token, these adhesion contracts that we all typically sign into, remember, if you've got to sign it, it's because they don't have the authority to do it. If they don't need your signature, then they have authority. If they don't need it. But look at what they do. They always, even when you go to traffic court, they find you guilty, and when you leave, they say, oh, you've got some papers for you to sign right here. If they had the authority to do that, they wouldn't need you to sign them. So don't. Don't grant them that authority. Tell them, no, I will not sign a contract with you. I didn't come here to contract with you, nor will I leave here granting you permission to do that which you did not have the authority to do. And if you injured me by what you did, now I have a cause of action against you. And I will pursue that action. A judge is not exclusive, and he is not uh, immune from prosecution when he injures you. A lawyer, district attorney, etc., is not immune from prosecution when he injures you. Now, now we come to the Fifth Amendment. No person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime except by presentment or indictment of a grand jury. In the case of U.S. versus Williams, I encourage you to go on to www.NewYorkCommitteeMen which is being changed to NewYorkLibertyAlliance.org. Go on that website and study this stuff. The, U the U.S. versus Williams is on there. Read what Justice Scalia said in the 63 majority opinion about the common law grand jury. The Fifth Amendment says presentment or indictment of a grand jury. It doesn't say common law, but Article 3, Section 2 of the U.S. Constitution does. It says the authority of the court shall extend to all cases in law, which is a common law, and equity, which is contract law, maritime and admiralty jurisdiction. Those are foreign uh, uh, interactions with foreign governments. For example, a ship traveling to a foreign nation is under admiralty law. When on the sea, they're under, they're under maritime law. Okay? So you're traveling from this nation to another nation, representing this nation, somehow, either in commerce or something, and as such, you're traveling under admiralty law. So the world court would have authority over those disputes. In the United States, the United States Supreme Court would have the authority over those disputes if it happens here between yourself and someone from a foreign nation. So these cases are very clear, and the word law in Article, uh, Article 3, Section 2 refers to common law. So Justice Scalia said that the people are sovereign, that as such, the common law refers to the rights of the people, the authority of the people. And the authority under Article 1, Section 2 of the Pennsylvania Constitution makes it very clear. And you can read it in that Constitution, and I recommend it to you. It says, all power is inherent in the people. And all free governments are found, wait a minute, all, all power is inherent in the people, and all free governments are founded on their authority. Remember, if they don't have the authority to do it, they need you to consent to it by signing your name. Did we grant them the authority to do these things? And the fact of the matter is, no. Their powers are enumerated in these two constitutions, the U.S. and the Pennsylvania. Uh, and, have, and have certain inherent and indefeasible rights. They changed the word indefeasible from inalienable or unalienable to indefeasible. 
this is the legislature without the authority of people or the ignorance of the people changing words in the Constitution to benefit them and to deprive you of your rights. This wasn't done by our delegates. This was done by the Pennsylvania State Legislature. And the, the deception is there. I have over there in my briefcase a book about this thick. It's all five constitutions from 1776 to 1968. But there's some revisions made without a constitutional convention being done since 1968, and it's done unlawfully. But yet they're subjecting you to it because you don't know that. They say, well, you're representatives in the legislature. I met with an attorney this morning. The attorney is dumb as a box of rocks. He was taught in the law schools. But he was he was listening. He did pay attention. And, uh, and uh, a, a very nice gentleman, uh, it, it surprised me that he was willing to listen. But he did. He listened very tenderly. And he made devil's advocate arguments, which I defeated. And I would not relent or back down. His arguments didn't make sense. They're communistic arguments. That's what we get. Well, how are they going to fund the schools if you don't pay property taxes? Okay? <laughs> Do you realize that every one of you in this room owes in excess of $47,000 because they have secured the debt of this nation by your body, by the fact that you exist. FDR did that in 1933, and this attorney kept bringing that up. Well, the, the New Deal with FDR in 1933, and I kept, I kept warding off his argument because I said this, show me in the Constitution, Counselor, where we gave the authority to the President of the United States to mortgage our souls, our bodies, our property, everything that we hold dear in life. God gave us that. Government didn't give it to us. We created government through those documents. Let's not allow them to take away our freedom by saying, well, FDR did it. FDR had six powers enumerated in the Constitution. That's it. And they all deal with foreign affairs. Nothing over the people of this country. I don't give a damn who the president is. I don't care. I don't owe him any allegiance. What I do owe him is to control his hind end so that he don't secure a debt with my body. That he don't secure a debt mortgaging everything that I have. There's a remedy for those things. It's called the common law grand jury. That's why the Fifth Amendment secured the right of the people to assemble and hold the common law grand jury and hand down presentments for indictment to the sheriff. And the sheriff can prosecute. Hand these documents to the district attorney and demand prosecution. And if the district attorney doesn't criminally prosecute, then we hand down a presentment against him for negligence, neglect of duty. We can protect ourselves. We hold that power. Remember Article 1, Section 2, all power belongs to us. We only loan some of it to them for a period of time. When they, when they violate that public trust, they have violated their oath and they have violated their, their promise to us, which is a breach of contract. You can sue them in their private capacity. They have to hire their own attorney. They can't use your tax dollars to do it with their solicitor. Let's don't let them do it. Let's hold their feet to the fire. The sheriff of my county said to me today, he tried to scare me because I arrested the zoning officer this morning. He said, Mr. Smith, it's come down to my attention by a very reliable source that there's a petition floating around to create a grand jury at Slippery Rock. I said, Sheriff, I told you more than two weeks ago we were doing it not only at Slippery Rock, but Butler County, Allegheny County, Westmoreland County, Erie, and, and Mercer, and, and, and others. We're doing it all across this country. 600 of your sheriffs in this state, in this country, and, and numerous states including 18 states already working diligently to do what you're hearing me say tonight, is creating these common law grand juries. And you, sir, need to get on board and do your duty before we prosecute you. You're a constitutional officer. You're to protect me and the other people of this county from this kind of tyranny. And you're doing nothing. You're sitting there believing that the federal marshal comes in and you meet with him in Pittsburgh outside of your county and outside of your jurisdiction that you have the authority to go meet with them. Do you know what that is, Sheriff? That's called a criminal conspiracy punishable under Title 18 of the United States Code and Title 18 of the Pennsylvania Crimes Code. I can prosecute right now, you right now because you admitted to me that you met with a federal marshal in Pittsburgh for two days. 
You need to get on board, Sheriff. I'm not hiding nothing from you, and you will not instill fear in me. I will not back down, but mess with me, and you'll find yourself in jail before I'm done with you. I don't want to do that. You are our common law officer, and you're to start acting like it. You're to start doing what you're told and what you swore when you raised your right hand and said, I do solemnly swear that I'll support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States of this Commonwealth. You need to do that, and you'll expedite that duty with fidelity. Fidelity means you will be true to. You will not usurp, usurp your authority and, and punish me for something because you hold a grudge against me. It's not personal. It's never going to be personal. What I do is a peaceful nature. I do not advocate violence. I do not advocate lawbreaking. But you, sir, are a lawbreaker by your own admission, telling me you met with a federal marshal in Pittsburgh for two days. Now you've admitted to me that you've conspired with someone else about us creating a common law grand jury. That likewise is a felony. Do you realize I can prosecute you for that in your private capacity, Sheriff? I don't want to do that. I would much rather support you and, and be behind you. You know, the Second Amendment says a well-regulated militia being necessary to a free state. What is a free state? It's a state that is set and controlled by the people. We each, every one of us, are militia, whether we like it or not. We need to start acting like it. We need to tell the sheriff. We will back you up with arms if necessary. All you need to do is call on us, and we'll be there. We will have a weapon without a permit. If I'm a felon and my rights have been taken away, there's only certain rights that can be taken away. It isn't all of them. So if I'm not allowed to have a gun or a weapon of any sort while I'm, being, while I'm under subjugation, because of judicial edict, then I lose that right until my sentence is over. But once my sentence is over, it cannot be extended beyond that time. You cannot require me to go because someone accused me of molesting a child, for example. You sentenced me to jail, and you sentenced me to pay a fine, and whatever else you sentenced me to do. I serve that time, I pay the fines, I do whatever I'm sentenced to do. But when that day ends, the last day of that sentence, I am now a free man again. You can't make me register in a community uh, 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 telling other people, hey, I did this. I'm wearing it on my sleeve. Look here, I'm a criminal. I served time for, for being a molester when, when I may not have even done it. But you convicted me. You said I did. That's, that remains to be seen. Only you know. But you can't go back out and molest another child if you did. Because if you did, then it's time for society to take you out of society, remove you permanently. That's the duty of the government. But it's not their duty to punish you and remove you from society if you're not guilty of something. And that's why a presentment with an investigation and indictment of a grand jury is so necessary. I urge you to put your names on that list with Gary here tonight for Allegheny County. Become a grand jury member. Put your name on that list and I will continue to teach you how to do it. You start by rescinding your voter registration because it lies. They deceive you by deceptive messages in here into signing into something to give them authority over you. Even if you're doing it, even if, say, if you move here from another state, you still would have to would we send that in the state where you live before? Yes. Okay. All registrations that you know of that you've ever filled out, send a letter of affidavit to them rescinding this. If you want to stay registered, you want to be a party member, that's up to you. But I recommend that you enter no party. If you'll notice on here, I wrote other none. No party. But if you want to know that I am here lawfully, I'm giving you the tidbit of information that's on here. If you want to take a look at the birth certificate that I did not create, you go look at it. Here's the number. Here's the QSIP number. It's called a QSIP number. Here it is. You created it. You made it a fiction. When you issued me a driver's license, when you issued a marriage license, when you issued a uh, 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 hunting license, a fishing license, anything that you issued that required my signature, you issued it in a what's called an ens legis, a fiction. All uppercase letter name, which is not you. It's a color of law. It looks like you, but it isn't you. Now, if I, if, God forbid that Kai here looks like Gary. Is Kai Gary? Can he ever be Gary? No, he can't. He could say his name is Gary Bowwinkle, but it can't be that. But this is what they do in putting your name in uppercase letters. They make you something that you are not, because God created you, government didn't. But they created that fiction, and it's all deception. Lawyers deceive you by lying to you. 
you ask them, why do you need me to sign this? They say, oh, because it's a law. We just tacitly accept it. Don't do it. Ask them, show me that law. I'd like to read it for myself. I want to see it. Well, they said, well, who's they? Give me a name. I'm not, I want to know who they is. Because I'm going to go talk to they, whoever they are. And they're going to have to produce a license. Uh, I'm sorry. They're going to have to produce a law that requires me to sign it. And I know I never granted any such authority. So if you have to sign it, they don't have the power to do it. It's that simple. Now, by putting your name on the common law grand jury, there are some that are saying you cannot be a registered voter and be a common law grand jury. I have a little bit of a dispute with that. Because these things that I did on here gives them some semblance that you are who you say you are. And those documents that I talked about that you did not create and you did not sign, like the birth certificate, was signed by somebody else saying that you came into existence here. But they issued a number, the mark of the beast that's in the Bible. They issued a number. And that number, everything is attached to. And you are that security for the national debt. They will continue to float bonds and borrow money against you, the fiction. They have no lawful authority to do that. They have to live within the means, just like you do. When you go work and earn, if you overspend, you're going to wind up bankrupt. You're going to be out there in debt. You'll be using credit cards that, that create phony money. The credit is your surety. When you go to the bank and you sign a bank note, they monetize it and print the money. That's where the money comes from. It's on you as the surety for that money, but they times it by 10. This is where the debt comes from. They don't want you to know this stuff. But in doing so, you will need to learn the Constitution. I will teach you. I will be there for you. Maybe long distance. You might have to call me by phone. You might have to email me. You might have to do different things. I've done a lot of things. I will be putting videos on the Internet on freemensociety.com. All you have to do is go to that site and you can watch videos. I will have videos in about a month on there. Okay? I'm making these videos for the purposes of teaching you. Some of you are recording these meetings where I'm talking. You have good, good information that I'm providing for you here. The things that I'm telling you, I encourage you to look at it and make sure I'm right. Make sure you know that what I'm saying is the truth. Because it's incumbent on you for the sake of freedom. Every man, woman, and child in this country, before us, us, and hereafter, your children, your grandchildren, all of your posterity, Owes, or, or owes allegiance to God but not to the government. You owe allegiance to them to preserve freedom for them and to take this nation back and restore it to law and order as the Founding Fathers gave it to us. That's our law to the government. You can do something about what's going on. You can save this nation. You can save your freedom. Your right to keep and bear arms cannot be infringed. In the Pennsylvania Constitution, Article 1, Section 21, it says cannot be questioned. The first question on that uh, uh, concealed carry permit is a violation of the law. Any sheriff that requires you to do that, and my sheriff in Butler County charges you $20 for a five-year permit. He just committed several felonies by doing that. Violation of public trust. Deprivation of rights. These are all felonies. And there's many more. He knows that I can charge him with over 30 felonies. I don't want to be his enemy. I don't want to have to do that. But come the grand jury, the common law grand jury, when established, I will. And he knows it. He knows it's coming. I don't want to hide it from him. Just a minute. I don't want to hide it from him. I don't want you to hide it from him. I want you to have the courage, some call it tenacity, to stand up and take that principle stand to say no more. I will not be tyrannized by you anymore. Just as the founding fathers stood up to Great Britain, and said, no more. We declare our independence from you. We owe you no allegiance any further. We now will create our, our own system of government. And they had to fight a war to, to, to accomplish that. They fought a war. Some showed up with pitchforks, garden hose, and you name it, because they didn't have guns or powder. But they was willing to take that stand knowing that they were going to be shot. Knowing that they would die for freedom. They did it, and they gave us freedom. And in your interest, the Constitution made it very clear that they don't want you to know about it. That blacks were not, uh, slaves were not to exist after the year of 1808. 
because they had been bought and were property. And they knew they had to deal with it. It was a, a, a serious note of contention among the founding fathers, the slave owners and the non-slave owners. And they said, all men will be free after the year of 1808. Well, we know that didn't happen. We know that eventually the 14th Amendment came back and actually made slaves of all of us. It didn't free the blacks. It made us all slaves because it called us citizens. A citizen is a subject. A subject is a slave. And it tells you right in the beginning, here again, it's hidden. The message is hidden. It says those born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof. This was talking about blacks. Lincoln did that. And he made the blacks believe that he was freeing them when in fact he enslaved every one of us. He pulled us all into the same boat. You were free already by the Constitution itself. It just needed that the law needed to be enforced. But we know when they won't obey the Constitution, why should we amend it? Why should we change it? If they won't obey one law, they're not going to obey the other. But you know why they don't? It's because there's no consequence for what they do. We have to provide that consequence to make them afraid to break the law, just like you are. Make them worry what will happen to them if they break the law and somebody notices it. Because now there is that fourth branch of government that Justice Scalia talked about in U.S. versus Williams. He said it's the fourth branch of government to prevent tyranny. It is the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. So it's up to us. They gave us checks and balances. They gave us freedom documents. People can say whatever they want to about those guys. Them were old slave owners. Them were Freemasons. They were this. They were that. You know what? They probably were all of that. But the fact of the matter was they gave us the law. And we have to enforce it. They were men who were willing to stand and die for freedom's sake. No matter what they were. Whether they were believers in God or, or they were atheists or whatever they were. They gave us those freedom documents. And it behooves us to stand up and do something about it. So, in signing your name onto that list as, uh, as a prospective uh, common law grand juror, I will continue to provide you with information and documents and everything needed. And it's happening all across this country. We are going to take this nation back. Don't be like I used to be. Don't sit there and say somebody else is going to do it. I don't have to do nothing. Because those who do nothing will be injured by it. It always seems easier to let somebody else take the risk. And I was one of those. I no longer am one of those. I have no fear of these people. They can arrest me and put me in jail, and I hope you will bring me paper and pen so I can sue every damn one of them. Because I will file actions against them immediately. I told my wife, she said, what do I do if they put you in jail? I said, bring me pencil and paper. That's all I need. They're going to they're gonna give me whatever to keep me alive or they might kill me, but I don't believe that I will go until God calls me there. I don't think that they will do that. I don't think God will let them do it until it's His call. So until then, I will do my part. I'll plow my row and He'll do the rest. So I will begin lawsuits against these people. And I will do it in their private capacity. It does scare them. They are scared to death of that. I've seen it many, many times. But we stand on the common law grand jury we hold the power, and we have not used it. We need to use it. Article 1, Section 17, again, says government cannot interfere with the obligation of contracts. Many of us believe that government can force us to do something. Some examples. We have a case going on right now, and that attorney that I met with this morning is handling it, where Wilmerding Burrow interfered with a landlord's contractual agreement and deprive him of his right. They're suing that person who did that. They're also suing Wilmerding Borough. They're both going to pay the price. And there's precedent cases where the Supreme Court has already ruled on that issue. The most recent case, uh, the guy was granted, one, I think it was $1.3 million, or two point, I forget, I think it was $1.3 million plus 5.68% interest. So these people got stung real bad with that. There's many other cases, but that's just one case that I happen to know about recently. So government can, cannot do these things, nor can they prevent you from contracting. So when you set your hand to something, remember it's a contract. If you're signing it, it's a contractual agreement. 
Make sure you know what you're doing before you sign it. It is no different than if you call me and say, Hagen, I need a new furnace put in my house. Would you come and give me a quote to do that? So I show up and you show me what you want. You tell me the specifications. And I go back and I say, I'll have, the, I'll have it for you tomorrow. So I come tomorrow and I've got a contract already written and signed. And I stick it in front of you and say, you don't need to read this, just sign right here. And you look at it, well, $55,000 to put in a furnace for me? Are you crazy? Why would I sign that? Well, why would we sign this stuff? If we know the damaging effects in this, why would we sign it? Make sure you know, that's my point. Make sure you know what's in these things before you sit your hand to it. Or don't do it. Just don't do it. Say, I don't understand it. I don't comprehend it. I'm not going to sign that. I don't have to. You can't make me contract with you, nor can you prevent me from contracting with someone else. This is our law. It's your law. It protects you. And it's there for you to use. Not to allow them to hinder you by interfering with it. Or for them to force you into contracts with them. These governments are corporate. They're corporations. They're no different than Westinghouse or General Motors or Ford or Chrysler or anybody else. They're corporations. They're private corporations. They're not the lawful government that we established. Just as I told that zoning officer this morning, I'm not a member of your corporation. I sent a letter to the township telling them so several years ago. <coughs> well, he said, I don't know anything about that. I said, that's not my problem. You're the one who took the job. You're the one receiving the tax money. You're the one getting paid to do a job that you just admitted to me you don't know. It's your business to know this stuff. And if you don't know it, go home. Resign and go home. And pay back the money that was paid to you because of your incompetence. I don't want you there. I don't want to pay you. No more than I would pay that guy who, who showed up with the furnace and said, I said, how many of these have you ever put in? He said, no. Why would I have him put one in? How do I know he's confident? What if he admits to me that he don't know like this guy did? I don't know. Well, then you're not going to put it in. You now breach the contract. I expected you to know what you're doing. It's an implied a uh, portion of the contract. The fact that you wrote a contract and said that you would install the furnace for me for this, the implication is there that you know what you're doing. So why would I hire you if you don't? You breached the contract. You violated my trust. Isn't it okay if a uh, city incorporation becomes a public corporation? What? If what? Is, is it not okay if a city incorporates and becomes a public corporation? No, it's not. There's no lawful authority for it. They are bound by the Constitution. A private corporation or a public corporation can write its own bylaws and don't need the people to approve them. That's what they do. And then they subject you to it because you're ignorant. You don't know the truth of the matter. You think because of the police officers that they have, which is nothing but corporate security guards. If you, I used to work at General Motors. If you go up to Michigan and you go to General Motors plant, they've got security guards. They're carrying guns and they got badges and they got all this stuff just like you see these officers out here in the street. They're corporate security guards. They're protecting the corporation. They're not protecting you. Supreme Court said so. Supreme Court said they don't have to protect you. Well, how should we treat a city that has incorporated them and that we might live in, like Ann Hills or something? They're a corporation. I guarantee you they're a corporation. Go over and ask them and they'll admit it. And they might then you them. send them a registered letter and tell them, then I'm not subject to your corporate rules, your 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 ta your your uh, Penn Township rules, ordinances, codes, bylaws, statutes, whatever it is, excuse me, that you claim to have, are not a purview of mine. I am not subject to it, nor will I obey them. If I injure someone, you can hold me liable because of the the implication. But the fact of the matter is, you have no lawful authority. You have to take me to a court. And a judge has to determine whether or not you have the authority. And if I properly present and raise the issues, the judge cannot hold me responsible to those township codes and ordinances because of it being of a private nature listed on Dunham, Bradstreet, and Mando. Can't they say you're in our get out of our corporation? They can they say anything they want they to. Don't want to they don't own it. They don't own it. It's it's a fiction, remember? It only operates in the in the in the fictitious world. It's not real. A corporation is not real. It's made up. It's an act. It's feigned. It, it's, it's not real. It's a real legal entity. 
and legal they, but not lawful. They can they can maintain that if you live in Penn Hills, you're in their corporation, you're in their jurisdiction. Legal but not lawful. Legal according to the phony statutes, but not lawful according to law. Legal and lawful are two major different things, totally different things. Yeah, versus common law, legal, <coughs> statutory versus common law. Yes, yes. When you go into court, law. you're being, well, he, the point that he's making here, if you go into a, a court and you say to the judge, What's, what uh, jurisdiction judge are you operating under? And he says, statutory jurisdiction. Well, judge, I'm somewhat confused. What do you mean? I've read the criminal rules and I've read the civil rules. I have never seen a statutory rule. Where do I find those rules so I can properly defend myself? Remember U.S. versus Miller? For rights of concern, there could be no rulemaking which would abrogate them. Okay, their rules don't apply to you. They apply to that fiction, that ends legis, that name and uppercase letters, that thing that don't exist in reality no more than they exist in reality. They're a fiction. The Supreme Court said that they would grant personhood. Did God create persons or did He create people? people. Well, if, suppose I walk onto ExxonMobil land, okay? That, that corporation owns that land. You're and, susceptible and, to their rules because it's privately owned. Well, the, the you know, it's incorporated city of Penn Hills might say the same thing. You, you know, but if Penn Hills, but wait a minute, you, you, you're missing a whole distinction. You're making a devil's advocate argument when you don't have the facts. The facts are Penn Hills Corporation did not purchase the land. Penn Hills Corporation does not own it. They subject people that are ignorant to it because they don't know any better. They don't own it. If they do, how do they gain ownership of it? Did you sell it to them? Did you give it to them? I suggest you didn't. Yeah, I agree, but they would probably say the people of Penn I don't Hills care what they say. Do you care what they say? Gave us the authority and power to regulate this, this territory. But do you care what they say? I don't. Yeah, it's going to be a defense that's abusive. If, if, if I would have cared what that zoning officer said this morning, I would never have arrested him. I didn't care what he said. It didn't matter. He violated the law. As such, he is under arrest. He's still under arrest. I haven't released him. And he's going to find out in court that he's under arrest. He was never released. He evaded justice by leaving on his own recognizance. He didn't ask me, am I free to go? He just left. Now, I could have physically attacked him, but then they would have probably brought smoke on me claiming that I injured him. But guess what? I had the right because he was on my property. I could have injured him and got away with it. I don't recommend violence. I don't want violence. I don't want to see violence happen. We have a peaceful means of settling disputes. And it's in the courts with a common law jury doing the presentment. And then the uh, prosecutor doing the indictment. And that's why I'm telling you, this is your power. Use it. Take back your country and your freedom. Don't let them steal it from you and your kids and your grandkids and your families and your friends. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And we're worse off today than we were in 1776 when the Founding Fathers said enough. We'll not be subjected to your taxation any longer. You have oppressed and tyrannized us far beyond the Magna Carta. We will no longer accept it. With that, is there any other questions? Hey, now, how do you think we should proceed in First. Okay, let me let me explain that. Right. What I found out, a common law jury consists of 25 people, 23 jury members, and two alternates. I recommend at least 30, seven alternates, because if somebody can't make it, and I've said this before, then you've got alternates that are sitting in that knows what's happening, knows what's going on, knows the rules, and know, know how to do the presentments and the investigations. It only takes four people to do an investigation. Then they call together with the evidence, the jury, and they present the evidence before the entire body. The majority decides, a simple majority decides, whether to hand down a presentment for indictment 
or where whether to find a no bill or a true bill. A true bill says we find you guilty as charged and we're presenting this to the law enforcement officer for criminal prosecution. That includes public officers, especially public officers, because they have taken an oath and it is a breach of contract when they violate the oath. It's a breach of public trust, it's a breach of contract. They no longer are fit to preside over a free people. Does that make sense? You only need two people to start it. We've got far more than that. We've got more than that, I'll bet you right here. What's Friday's meeting here? Friday's meeting is going to be very similar to this one. But we're, I'm asking people from Allegheny, Westmoreland, and uh, Butler County to come together and let's do more training. Let's continue to pursue getting this thing happening, but it's going to require you to sacrifice some time for study, for you to read and know what's happening. Okay? Because you may be called on, since your name is on that list, to serve on the grand jury to look into an investigation and determine whether or not you want to hand down a presentment against this person or this public officer, especially public officers. It's the only way we can save this nation. We can't take back this nation without having the power of the people being exercised. I thought it would be very important that we uh, determine how they're forming the, jury, the grand jury now. I'm sorry? How did like, you and I talk today? How yes. are they forming? We got, I think we got to substantiate or determine, without a doubt, how they're forming the, the, the grand jury now. Okay, time. You put, here's how it happens. You have a list. You put your name, email address, and phone number on that document. That you're a prospective manager. You're willing to, to sacrifice and make the necessary sacrifices to be a part of that process. It is a process. Then, the next step will be come together in a meeting and establish rules. The next step will be to vote for a foreman to handle and a secretary to handle the necessities of that body. Then you will need to advertise in the newspaper for the November election. That list of names who have put their name on the, on the list, you don't have to put them in the paper, but that you have a sufficient number of the people signed on that document which is in possession of the foreman for the grand jury at that point. People will vote for you as you put your name on the ballot in your county. They will vote for 25 people. You'll do that through the election process in the county. Wait a minute. Whenever, if there's only one vote for you out of 25, there might be 10 votes for one, one vote for another, five for another, it doesn't matter. The people have had an opportunity to participate. You will advertise it in the newspaper for three weeks consecutive. That this election will be held in November to establish a common law grand jury. This is by the election law. They can't stop you from doing it. It happens. You file the papers with the election bureau from, for your county. You're only doing each county. You're not doing two of them or ten of them. You're doing your county. So in putting your name on there, you might want to run uh, to be elected by the people. This is how you do it. There might be 10,000 votes for you in the county, but there might only be one vote. It doesn't matter, 10,000 or one. If, that's, if you're only 25 people on the, on the ballot and you only receive one vote and the election is over, you are a member of the grand jury because the public was notified, the, the laws were followed, and you got one vote, maybe just your own. But you're now a grand juror. And you can be called up as soon as someone files a complaint. And each member, any member of the grand jury, can bring forth a complaint on any reason. Doesn't have to be, just suspicion. I think maybe so-and-so over here violated his oath. So you write up a complaint to the grand jury. The grand jury has the four people that are nominated and elected by the body itself to do the investigation. And it may not always be the same four people. The four people might say, you know, I'm kind of getting burned out. How about four more? 
take up the gauntlet here and do the investigations, and here's how we do it. But you establish the rules, the process by which you will run the common law grand jury. Does that answer you? No, no, no. Question, I've never recalled voting for a grand jury. Yet. You never have. <laughs> that's, that was my question. How do they do it now? I just, I, I, I just told you. Just told you. I just said. Well, I don't ever remember <coughs> voting for a grand jury candidate. You, see, you He's have. talking about the common law grand jury. I'm talking yeah, about common. How are they doing it now? He's They're doing it with they attorneys. Can... The judge appoints attorneys to do it. The bar association associations in control of everything. It's time for us to take them out. As far as the title of nobility, it's a violation of Article 1, Section 10. No titles of nobility. It's also a violation of the original 13th Amendment, but they won't admit that. I happen to have a certified copy of it. They won't admit it, so why bother? No Article 1, Section 10. A certified copy of the violation of the 13th Amendment? No, the original 13th Amendment barred lawyers from participating in government at all. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> And I have a certified copy of that from the Virginia Archives. It's, it's uh, recorded and archived in Sam Houston Library in Texas. And I'm going there to see that with my own eyes. I have a copy of it. And I want to see it in the archives with my own eyes. And I will require a copy, a certified copy while I'm there. We're out in Texas. It's near Arlington, uh, Sam Houston Library. I, 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 it's not Arlington, it's a little silver. Is that Liberty, Liberty, no, Texas. Is that close to San Antonio? <coughs> I don't think. I'm not sure. No, but I'm going there. I go to San Antonio. Do you? I was just there like last month. Well, look up Liberty, Texas, and you'll see. I mean, that's the best way I know to tell you. That's what I have to do. I'll Google search it. Or, I'm sorry. I'll map quest it. I'll go there. And I'm looking forward to San Antonio. Right? I want to see the Alamo. You know, San Antonio. That's San Antonio. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Somebody else has a question. Yeah. yeah um, are there a certain set of rules that you have to use for a common law grand jury? No. I understand that you vote for them, but yeah. is there any sort of a, like they laid out guidelines of what a grand jury's um, powers are and are not, but they can't do? <coughs> um, from what I'm, a very, very, very little amount of legal knowledge on the part, but from what I'm to understand, a grand jury can indict just about anybody for just about anything. That's right. That's right, but you don't want to do frivolous things. Right. Okay. Frivolous means without basis, without lawful basis. So if you suspect somebody is stealing money, for example, it's a good reason to not even prosecute them or to hand out a presentment of the grand jury in the investigation. If you feel that the township supervisor, for maybe Penn Hills, is spending money like a trooper and, and uh, it's not lawfully <coughs> spent. Um, honey, can you get out my uh, constitution out of my briefcase beside you here? Um, in the original Constitution, we, uh, Benjamin Franklin was the chair of the delegation to create that document. And he called us free men and women more than 27 times. He never called us citizens or subjects of any sort, only free men. Uh, that being said, um, in, in section 47, I'll read you quickly what he did, which fits with what I'm telling you here. In the freezer, Gary. You looking for the tea? Yeah. It's in the freezer. The jug. Okay. I won't have it. Sorry about that. So basically, the root of my question was: is, Do we decide our own rules? Yes. Yes. But okay. but there will be examples of what to do and what not to do. I'll put forth on the www.newyorkcommittemen.org, which will be, the new site will be libertyalliance.org. That's supposed to be up by the end of the week. It's already up, but I think it's under construction. He doesn't have very much on there, but there will be examples. There already are some common law grand juries in operation in California. They also, under the uh, Oath Keepers, I don't know if any of you know about them, I know Jim Barr does, yeah. But the Oath Keepers have also established a common law court wow. to deal with these matters because these corporate courts and corporate judges are refusing to do their duty. But then again, look at what it's saying, corporates. Their interest is in protecting the corporation, not protecting the rights of the people. But here's what Franklin said. He said, in order that the freedom of the commonwealth may be preserved inviolate forever, that means it can't be changed. 
heavy chain. There shall be chosen by ballot by the free men in each city and county, respectively, on the second Tuesday in October in the year of 1783, and on the second Tuesday in October in every seventh year thereafter, two persons in each city and county of this state to be called the Castle of Censors, who shall meet together on the second Monday of November next ensuing their election, the majority of whom shall be a quorum in every case, except as to calling a convention in which two-thirds of the whole number elected shall agree, and whose duty it shall be to inquire whether the Constitution has been preserved inviolate in every part. Well, we know that hasn't been the case, but the Council of Censors did meet in 1783 and adjourned in 1784 and, and said there's no, there's no change in the Constitution necessary. But the legislature in 1789 did change it, wrote a new Constitution, began operating by it in January of uh, 1990. No lawful authority to do so, but they did it. Okay. And whether the legislative and executive branches of government have performed their duty as guardians of the people, or assumed to themselves or exercised other greater powers than they're entitled to by the Constitution. They are also to inquire whether the public taxes have been justly laid and collected in all parts of the Commonwealth, and what manner the public monies have been disposed of, and whether the laws have been duly ex executed. For these purposes, they shall have the power to send for persons, papers, and records. They shall have authority to pass public censures, to order impeachments, and to recommend to the legislature the repealing of all such laws as appear to them to have been acted contrary to the principles of the Constitution. These powers they shall continue to have for and during the space of one year from the day of their election and no longer. Uh, they, the said Council of Censors shall also have power to call a convention to meet within two years after their sitting if there appear to them to be an absolute necessity of amending any article of the Constitution which may be defective, explaining such as may be thought not clearly expressed, and of adding such as are necessary for the preservation of the amendments proposed, and such articles as are proposed to be added or abolished shall be promulgated at least six months prior or before the day appointed for the election of such convention for the pr uh, previous consideration of the people that they have shall have an opportunity of instructing their delegates on the subject. Now you hear what they said? They're delegates. It didn't say they're representatives. You elect delegates to do a constitutional convention to amend the Constitution if it needs done. You don't send a state representative or a state senator because they're going to make it to suit themselves and that's exactly what they did here. They did it in the following four. They made it to suit them and to give them immunities from criminal prosecution. That took the power away from us. Be the following four constitutions. So here's some rules, yes. Here's some rules right here. Benjamin Franklin was called the sage of Philadelphia by George Washington. That was because he was wise beyond his years. Nobody was as wise as this man in George Washington's opinion. He set forth a good rule for you to follow. You want to know what to follow, how to make the rules? Here it is. Here's how to do it. You have subpoena power. If you subpoena someone and their papers before the grand jury and they fail to appear, you issue a subpoena, hand it to the sheriff for him to go and arrest them and to bring them there and to hold them in contempt. And you can hand down a presentment and indictment against them as well for contempt. You hold more power in your hands than you realize. You think them cops out there with the, the weapons of death around their belt hold power? You hold more power than they do. And they are afraid of you when you know what I know. These people start to shake. I don't shake when they are my presence. They're people I'm going to treat them with respect. But if they try using those weapons on me, I'm going to prosecute them. Hey, hey, um, are you going to the sheriff? We're going to demand of the sheriff, thank you for bringing that up, we're going to demand of the sheriff and the senior judge of the county to provide us the grand jury meeting room. We will meet in the courthouse. People will have confidence in what we're doing because they see us now as that fourth branch of government that Scalia told us about. I think it will give us more credibility. Absolutely. In the courthouse. Absolutely. Okay. Well. And I think under the sheriff's duties, one of his duties is to provide a place for us to meet. That's correct. 
but it should be in the courthouse. It is the fourth branch of government, as Justice Scalia said. Who made a copy of that? It's on, the, it's on that website. Oh, it is? Yeah, it's there. Is that New that? York Committee? Huh? Is that New York Committee Men? The New York Org? Committee Men dot org, yes. Okay. <laughs> it's not NY, just New York. Spelled out, New York Committee Men dot org. Okay. Thank you. Well, Jim you that, uh, the name of that. Yes. I would like to search on it, and there is a meetup. Yes. Yeah, you were aware. There's a Monday night, there's a Monday night meetup group. Right. Uh, different different ones have different meetups, so you can sign up for the ones that you there's going to be state leaders. I believe at this point he intends to name me as a state leader for Pennsylvania. I'm not going to be here. So I would recommend one of you take that position. I'll take it from Florida because I lived it. And I'd be happy to do it, but I've got a lot more work there that I haven't done like I have here than I do here. I've already got things underway with several counties here. And you guys can pick up the gauntlet and continue on. Some of you who maybe are retired like I am can dedicate yourself and maybe the rest of you can pay dues to that organization to help pay the expenses and, and so forth of that person who takes this job and takes this job seriously as I do. I would do this for free. If I could just have my bills paid, my time is free. All I need is to pay my, pay my bills and have something to eat and a pillow to lay my head on the Christ. I don't need anything else. God, did, God provides everything for us, and He'll provide that for you. So I encourage you. What we did in Florida, we started what's called the Free Men Society. It came from Article 47 in this book. And we are paying $10 a month dues, which is not a lot of money. But it pays our bills. It pays for what we need to do. It lets people know. Then we start putting it out in the public. We start advertising. We start doing different things. If you can afford more than $10 a month, give it. For the purposes of freedom, you couldn't make a better donation. It's like what Gary does here. You know, Gary tremendously sacrifices for what he does here. I know he does. And I thank God for people like him. I thank God for all of you, but especially the Garys of this world. Because those are the ones that will save freedom for all of us. So by doing these things, you're helping. Gary, I know Gary is tremendously busy with what he does, but he has such a pleasant personality, everybody likes him. <laughs> so, has anybody else got any other questions? i got a couple more devil's advocate questions. I don't want devil's advocate. Give me something positive. Forget devil's advocate. I, 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 I'm sick of that shit. You know, I am really tired of it. You know, if you're not willing to, I'll tell you what Samuel Adams said. If you're not willing to take the stand and fight while you can, then go home from among us. We ask not your, your, your efforts. Bow down and, uh, and kiss the feet of the, the teens that bind you. You're a servant. If you're going to play that game, you're a servant. You're not a master. And you're acting like it. Don't act like it, please. Get that positive attitude and go forward. And make government do what it's supposed to. Because devil's advocate, the only thing it'll do is confuse the living shit out of you. I pray that you won't do that. Can you talk about the, the election thing? Yes. Um, is that similar to like a magistrate where there's no political affiliation? You know what I mean? Like, you don't really believe that a magistrate doesn't have political affiliations, do you? Allegedly, in an election they don't. Allegedly. Yeah. yeah, we all know better. I mean, they don't run ads. Yeah. A Republican or a Democrat. But they're dictated to them, they're told. It's completely obvious what they are. Remember, I went to that school, they okay? Under that flag. Just remember, I went to that school. I know what they teach them. Oh, yeah. And they teach them how to take you out back and beat the shit out of you, too, if you give them a hard time. And the cops are more than willing to do that. <laughs> Did you have a question? Somebody raised your hand. Let me see. So, so, how do we get, what can we do tonight to get started? Put your name on that list. Set a date for the next meeting. Uh, be, uh, begin to establish the rules. And I'm, I strongly encourage you. You can find the 1776 Constitution. Jim, I think you have one of these, don't you? Well, bring it. Make copies of it and pass copies around to everybody. I know you can do that. Is there a way we can get a copy of the specific sheriff's duties? 
so when we go to him, we can point to it and say, no, you're, what you're doing is just to provide a uh, meeting place for us. Yes, it's the Constitution itself. Okay, the Constitution is his duty. He does raise his hand and take that oath. He right. swears allegiance to it. He right. swears that he'll obey it and defend it and that he will do it with fidelity. His duty is to the people. He's only mentioned once in this Constitution. Oh, okay. Okay, is nothing that else. He's a specific in there about him providing a place for us to meet? No. No, he's the common law officer elected by the people. And the election is what puts him there. The same as the election is what's going to put you there. Remember, Article 3, Section 2. The judicial power shall extend to all cases in law. Just end it right there. We need to write up some kind of uh, form letter uh, demand for the sheriffs of all kinds yes. that, uh, you know, for uh, requesting a place to meet. Uh, no, no, not requesting. Demand. 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 Right. No, don't request anything. Right. Remember, you're the master. Right. A master don't ask his servant anything. He tells him. Right. You go over here and you do this. Because you're my servant. I'm paying you to do that, right? We're paying them. Are they not our servant? Mm -hmm. So when we demand that, should everybody's name be on the demand? Yes. The letter? Yes. yes. I would recommend to all of you sign it. That's after we get elected, though. And we should, well, we're not you can do it before. You can do it before because you're still one of the people. If somebody says that you're a citizen of the United States of America, like on that document there, tell them no. Well, who are you then? I'm one of the people. We the people, the preamble says, we the people of the United States. It doesn't say we the citizens, we the subjects, we the slaves. It says we the people. All of us are the people of this country. Let me get this straight. Before the grand jury is even elected and formed and official, you're going to demand that Absolutely. the courthouse provide a place for us Absolutely. to meet. Absolutely. What, what, what success do you think you're going to have? Well, I don't give a damn. I don't care. Okay, they'll write back and say, there is no grand jury. We're not giving you a place to meet. Well, remember what John Adams did. Have you ever studied what John Adams did with the ambassador to the... No, but, but the let's, stay, let's stay pertinent to the question here. Until the grand jury is elected and on the ballot and it was official, I wouldn't be demanding the courthouse to give me a place to meet. Really? Why not? Because you're not a grand jury. So, who said it? You have to be elected. Are you not one of the you people? Said, are you not the You master? just said it earlier. The, the, Jim Barr asked repeatedly, what do we have to do to, to become an official grand jury, and you told us. Yeah. So until we go through that, why would we be acting like a grand jury? Because you put your name on the list. That it. Okay. All right. Now, once you're elected, you're officially. There's no question. But until that time, you still have the right, and everyone is welcome to come there. Everyone is welcome to participate. Still have the right to what? Finish your sentence. Until that time, you still have the right to... You have the right to exercise your authority. Now, now you're impersonating a grand jury. Now we can be charged until we get elected. Right, Hagan? No. No. You're not impersonating anything. You're one of the people. You're, you you're, are just the way... You're demanding a meeting space at the courthouse. That's act, That's impersonating a grand jury, right? Well, then why bother? Why not just, why not just sit there and shut up and not say anything? All I'm saying is, why don't you wait until you're officially elected and then demand the, the room at the courthouse? Would, wouldn't you agree that that's a more logical way? No, I will not agree with that. I absolutely will not. I will take the stand while I can. Anytime I can. And I do. I demanded that the sheriff arrest that zoning officer this morning was there something wrong with that? Maybe I should have come and asked your permission first. What do you think? Um, that was probably a smart move to do. I'm, okay. I was, that was one of my questions, was how, how did that conversation turn out? But again, you're playing yourself. devil's advocate, and I don't have the patience for it. Well, you know there's a benefit to answering devil's advocate questions, right, Hagen? Is there? Yes. No, I disagree with that. It, it kind of prepares us for the war that's ahead, when we know what the enemy is going to say to us in court. Do you, do you even care? I do. I only care about the law. I don't care about what the enemy says. The British, the British told George Washington they would defeat him. They sent their best general to try and do it. Cornwallis failed. He failed because he wasn't a godly man. He was there to kill people. He wasn't there to have justice. He wasn't there to preserve freedom. He was there to kill Washington and his troops. You're now out of the realm of the oh, judiciary and you're into war. Well, what do you think this is? Do you think this is not well, a war? Not yet. It is. We're still, we're still peaceful. You, you see, war in your mind is, is war in your mind is guns. guns. That's not what it is. Every single it time, is a war. Every single time, 
that your kids have done. Yes. You only pay it because if you don't, somebody's either going to come threaten you, threaten violence, or use violence. I agree. Yeah, it's yeah, no different okay. than when the mafia goes to buy to yeah, pay for their protection. Right. Except, yeah. you, except they just have a lot better PR. Right. Now, do you have a power? They, just, water they water. just have a lot. They just have a lot better PR. But but the thing is, is like every dime that you give a criminal, they're going to use against you. Right. I suspect. Yeah, they're they're gonna I'm going to move on to something else. Because this kind of talk is not going to move us. It's not going to accomplish anything positive. So I'm not even going to recognize it anymore. I have some fun. I think if everybody here uh, brings one other person, at least one other person, <coughs> this is how we're going to grow. This is how we're going to be uh, able to do this off. So I mean, uh, everybody here should at least be able to bring one more person. Even if they just come and listen, you know what I mean? Um, we can provide um, these, 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 Do you have your list of the prospective dangerous people that signed up? Yeah. Would you pass that around for those who wish to put their name on it? Hi. Megan, I've got a question for you. I'm sure. Okay. And another. A judge or some other judicial officer or a man It'll be the sheriff, yeah. the senior judge of the county, yeah. and the clerk of court. They will all be noticed. As these as these things unfold and the documents get filled out, there will be documents to fill out. It'll get served and the election bureau will get served by the prospective people who want their name on the list to be voted as a grand juror in November. Question for you. When you think of a, a, a job application, you know, how do you handle that a little bit? Part where uh, they ask, are you a U.S. citizen? I mean, you know, I wish you marked that no, it doesn't, you know, to be a brief, but I'm thinking then how do you deal with the idea that, well, I could make can't hire work. you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's up to you, okay? I will not... I, I will not answer that I'm a U.S. citizen, okay? okay? I will answer that I am one of the people, okay? okay? Most people will comprehend that because it says it in the first few words of the preamble to the Constitution. We the people, okay? okay. okay. Now, Gary, you have enough people on that list already to start it. And the recommendation is to get 25. If you can't get 25 in any given county, something wrong with the people exactly. in that county. But once people know about it, I've been talking to people, I just talked to people right over there at Arby's. The girl said, my husband would love to talk to you. I said, well, uh, she said, I, we have property in the Mango County though. And I said, well, I'll be speaking there Sunday. She said, we'll be there. So they're coming to the fire hall at uh, Edinburgh, uh, or, uh, Stoneboro uh, Fire Hall. All right, so what did you say to her together? Well, I just started talking about the Constitution and how we lose our freedom. And, stuff. Need and that's, that's important to people. They don't want to lose the freedom. You still have a normal flow in there? How many alternates? Four or five? Alternates? Yes. Well, alternates, there needs to be two. Two. 23 jurors and two alternates. Uh, but I recommend uh, uh, a total of 30 instead of 27 or 25. Okay. And five more alternates. Who has not signed this? I'm not. I signed it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who has? You have not. I don't, I don't know. Okay. Well, make sure it's passed through. There you go. I'll be a supporter, supporting role, but I'm not willing to sign it yet. I hope you guys do though. And I, I, I got, got one more. So then I got one announcement. If anybody hasn't contributed money uh, for Truth Central tonight, would you please uh, do so? Uh, no, I don't know oh. so. You know, we're going to be moving to a different location. We're no longer going to be up. here in July. Please speak up so we can hear everybody. Mike was just saying that the location is being moved. We're being moved to Cool Hollow. What is that address, Gary? 450 Cool Hollow. 450 Cool Hollow Road. Cool, yeah, cool Hollow Road. We can have our next day. Next month we can have it there. Parking, parking's going to be a problem. Okay, when is our next meeting? Uh, we have to say. Well, we, we want to do it.
do that. Fly them. We should do it tonight. Yeah. He just said fly them. No, no, Allegheny County. Allegheny County. Uh, well, Allegheny people from Allegheny County can come to Mike Green's place. Yeah, I think we should all go up there Friday. We'll be leaving here about 4 30 morning. Right you up. take the bus, right? You I drive your bus out there? The bus, yeah. And the Allegheny County chapter establish our uh, next meeting day tonight. I won't be there. I strongly suggest that you do. Okay. Uh, uh, Jim, I, I can make a suggestion since you're the Allegheny uh, Brigade, the Sheriff Brigade. Yeah. What, why don't we have uh well, why don't you put the meeting on the uh meetup for our next following meeting? On the sheriff brigade meeting? Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's just a suggestion. I just remember something. There's a few of us that are going to a uh, it's called Freedom Police. A lot of uh patrons and everything going up there. This is if we can have something on a flyer, I'm gonna have DVDs tonight. If you can have something on a flyer or a handout, there's going to be a lot of people up there. This is a bucks I'm going to be speaking at that meeting on the 5th in the, e uh, in the evening. I think it's 5 in the evening. I'll be bucks speaking. County. Oh, really? Yes, yes. I'll be speaking there. Oh, really? And I'm going to be talking the same thing you're hearing me talking tonight, oh, but to great. a lot more people. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'd like to have a couple hundred people to use. Yeah. Right? I got an invite to speak there, and oh, great. that's kind of what we worked out. Is that? Wow. Is that? Oh, I sent you an email on that. No, no. Okay. Well, he called me. Uh, Paul called me the day before yesterday. The oh, man. Yes. And uh, somebody had told me about. It. I think Gary told me about it. Yeah. I and and I emailed him and told him I would be interested in speaking there oh, okay. on the Constitution and Common Law Grand Jury. And uh, he called me back and was delighted to have me speak. Great. Great. Jim. So uh, he said, "Are we meeting?" Can we establish our next meeting place? Well, it's going to be after, have to be after the July 6th, so we'll, we'll be up there. Well, that should be the time then we should uh, demand to get that meeting spaced out at the courthouse. Yeah. And let's, yeah, let's make this next meeting, we should go over uh, the, demand, the, the demand letter to the sheriff uh, that we want to uh, meet with. Now, I would urge you to go on the New York Committee Men website and get the number and call John Derrish, who is the uh, administrator for that, and talk to him about it. He they're will already, tell you. Yes, he will tell you this stuff. They were already meeting in the courthouse? There's, okay. in California, I don't know, I, I can't answer okay. that, okay? Uh, but talk to him, he knows, okay. okay? California is already established. They've already established it there. They're advertising also, through the Oath Keepers, that they've established the common law court because there don't seem to be any. And there's over 600 sheriffs involved in that. Sheriff Richard Mack is one of them. Yeah. So, you know, get to know all you can. I don't have all the answers. Right. And I'm not the end-all, ask-all, because I don't know everything. I think I thank God that there's other people who can answer the things that I can. And I'm always uh, concerned you're not going to be here after July, right? But I'll be available. Well, you can contact say, me. We have to be able to take over. Yes. Right? I, I yes. always, yes. always rely on you all the time. We won't be able to do that, right? We, we all have to do our part. We all have to do our part. What's the name of the guy in New York community? John Darish, D A R A S H. Yeah. D A R A S H. Yeah. Now, a girl called me. I get calls, as I tell you guys, all the time. It's not uncommon. For me to get calls from people that have legal problems and they're looking for help because they don't know what to do. They're being penalized by criminal courts, which is not a criminal act for speeding. For running a stop sign. All these different things are being put before a criminal court and it's called statutory court. That's crimes. You're being subjected to criminal rules. But there's no, you can't be jailed for those things, but they do. This girl called me last night begging me to help her with a problem in New York. I said, I, I know just the guy to send you to. He's in New York. And she called him and she called me back and said, I have to thank you so much. <coughs> God bless you for sending me to him. He helped me. So you see, there are people elsewhere. And we need people all over this country, and it's happening. This country, people are waking up. They're starting to realize that we're worse off today than the colonists were in 1776. So we can do it. We can do this. And, and, and it's going to be a harder task because we've allowed these corporations to assume 
themselves as a kingdom. They're not a king. They're a servant. And we need to start acting like the master. Make them good. Anything else? Okay. Well, uh, you still haven't established your meeting time and date. I'm blessed, my Lord. When is the big time? I would propose, I, Gary, yeah. Jack, I would propose, uh, well, next yeah, uh, well, next Wednesday will be even the holiday. I would propose the Wednesday after that. Okay. July 10th, I believe. Okay. The only, the only problem we're going to have is parking down there on full holiday. Yeah. Well, would we be able to get uh, the, the letter together in time to demand our space in the courthouse prior to that? Sure. All right. Yeah, see but I urge everybody here to try to come to uh, Slippery Rock. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. We'll be leaving here about 4.30 if everybody needs to arrive. Now these registration forms are here. If you're already registered and you want to do what I've laid out on those papers, take one of these and do it. This is totally different from what it used to be. I forced a lot of changes on this document because of what I did. If I can do that, you know what all of you guys can do? Together. I would just love it. Pagan, is it alright if I post this up on YouTube? This I, I don't video? mind at all. This is okay. information everybody should hear. Okay. No, I had nothing. Like I told you to today, you don't need to do an investigation on me. Anything you want to know, come ask me. I'll tell you. Okay. Pagan, it's John, what's the guy's name? John Barish? Darish. D A R A S H. I wrote it down. I wrote it down. Jim, you have a question? Well, I just want to see what our plan is. We're going to meet. At a location and, and draw up the letter, then go to the sheriff. Is that correct? Is that consensus? Yeah. Okay, so we want to meet sometime. What is the next meeting? Day? Wednesday, July, whatever, July 10th. Can okay, we meet at July 10th? At uh, 450 Cole Hall Road. 450 Cole Hall Road. Okay, and then we'll draw up the letter. Make sure everybody we'll has my number because we're going to have to do parking arrangements. But okay, is, is that July? Okay. Is that July 10th? Yes. Wednesday, yes, that Wednesday. July 10th, yes. July 10th that's Wednesday. Yes. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. where? 450 Cole Hollow. 450 Cole Hollow Road, there yeah. you go. You've got it. No trespassing sign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and for those of you that don't know about the no trespassing sign, how I arrested the zoning officer today was because he violated his oath. And that new trespassing sign that I set up right there on top of the water cooler, I sell those. They're $45 a piece. Post one at the entrance of your property. If they come on your property, you have the authority to arrest them. They now owe you $5,000. <laughs> <laughs> have you arrested uh, I've arrested the state cop, the zoning on the property. Are you coming back that night? Uh, yeah, Jim, I have to. Jim. Oh, okay, I didn't know if we were in a party. I don't know if you guys were. Gary, can you get that sign I want to, what the sign that he's talking about on the wall of the sign? Oh, the sign on the wa water cooler. I want to, oh, yeah. I want to showcase it in the video. Please. Thank you. And I, I thank all of you guys. I really appreciate you coming here and being part of this process. Yeah. Thank you for coming down from yeah, Butler County. Yeah. Here, I want to showcase that. That's a great pose. Uh, that's, that's just beautiful. Okay, I got it. Got it? That's Cole Hall on the left. And that's a take. <laughs>